my family, my parents came from Nyanza, Western Kenya, looking for green pastures. They came to the Nairobi. They couldn't find a job. They ended up in Kibera or Kibra. That's where I see as my home. I remember it was a tough life. My father lost hope. He became angry. And it was really tough life in our family. And I saw my mom go through a lot of abuse. But one thing that my mother really gave us was the pride. When you live in a plot in Kibera, those who are rich that I knew were people who could afford meat. When you hear the smell of meat, you are like, they are rich. I never knew what's wealth apart from Kibera. But I remember my mom used to see us when our lips are dry. She tell us, Kennedy, go back to the house and put the kimbo so you look like you've eaten something. <laughs> but I was really hungry. That was the life that I went through, that pride. My mom never went to school. But she used to give me a lot of encouragement that, Kennedy, I want you to be what I could have been in my life if I could have gone to school. So I felt that was a really something hopeful. And life became tough. And this really scares me a little bit. It's all about where you are born. It's all about that passport. Which family are you born in? It's so sad that it determines your future. I happen to be born in that family without godfathers or godmothers. And I became hopeless. And there was a lot, there was no food in the house. And I remember at the age of 10, I had to run away from the house to be with other street children, to be Chokora. Something that really touched my life. When I stole one mango at Toy Market, I was beaten by mob justice. They were going to kill me just because of one mango. And I was hungry. Until a Samaritan passed by and stopped everyone. Why are you killing this boy? Honestly, that person never left me. I called that person Good Samaritan. He took me, he told me not to steal again, paid for the mango, and gave me food. I didn't know him. But I felt like he touched my heart. And at that moment, I knew kindness. Of course, being on the, being on the street, I did really horrible things. I stole the bags. I used the drugs, glue, gum. And I remember when I used to we carry faces. If you don't give us money, we throw in your face. But not because I wanted to do that, but because of life. Life can push you in a corner. I've seen life really pushes young girls to trade their body, not for money, but for food. So life really pushed me to do things that I didn't want to do. And honestly, I gave up on life. Sometimes you want to die because people judge you. You have to sleep in the cold using that glue or petroleum is for us it was more like pain medicine that make you go sleep. So when the rain rains on you, you don't feel it. And yet we are being judged. That's a life that I really passed through for four years. My life changed when I met a priest who took me to school. In that parish, I met a man who gave us a book of Martin Luther King Jr., I was really inspired because as a man who really wanted to die, let's not, let's not lie to ourselves, if you cannot afford your daily meal, if you don't have hope, what is hope? Hope is that thing that makes you wake up in the morning, going for a job, going for your children, providing. But if you live a life whereby there is no that hope, there's only one thing that unites the rich and the poor. It was death. I was never scared of dying because I knew even the rich, they die. And that's, that's not good. 
That's called hopeless. That's the same hopeless that will make a young man from a slum being paid 200 shillings to go and face the bullets. And you might think they are crazy. They are not crazy. They have faced the limit. And they are willing to die. That's lack of hopeless. When you have hope, you don't want to die and leave your children. You want to have a dream. So for me, the story of Dr. King was something that really inspired me. So at the age of 15, I wanted to be Dr. King of Kibera. My Dr. King of Kibera was crazy. <laughs> but I, I love the idea of selflessness, caring about other people. That materials is wealth, but the wealth of love and caring about your community is more important. The journey started. Again, the priest left the parish, went to Italy. I was kicked. And that's life. And I still remember when I lost my friend, Kamau, on the street. He stole a handbag, a pass, as I call it in American English. <laughs> my wife is an American, so don't worry. And he was killed by mob justice. No counseling, nothing, but it was really, really touched me. And I knew, like, to see the Land Rover taking that body and people asking me, and saying no. I've never forgiven myself to say my friend goes. But now I have this big dream of transforming my community. So when I went back to Kibera and I got this job in the industrial area whereby I was earning 100 shillings, I knew God. I used to kneel down in my 10 by 10 room. It was leaking. I slept on a, on a box, carton, as they call it. And I say, God, I have a covenant with you. If you bless me, if you help me come through this struggle, I want to give it back. I will give it back. And that's why I found out that people try to pray for themselves. God make me rich. God give me a job so that I can ring her. <laughs> God give me this so that I can walk with my nose high. And not saying hi to people. But I say, <laughs> tough, eh? So my prayer was that if you really help me, I will give it back. That was a covenant. So one day after coming from my factory job, one of my best friends was called Boy. He was shot by the police. And that's the moment I said, enough is enough. I bought a football. And now I'm having fire in my belly. The fire of Martin Luther King Jr. And my friend George, who you heard about, I went to him and said, George, we are starting something that can transform this community. If we come together, we are so much powerful. If we come together, we can achieve a lot to our weather. Now, George tells me, Kennedy, you are crazy. You don't have wazungu, you don't have donors. You don't know, you're not educated, you can't even write a proposal. And I'm like, what? <laughs> George, I am, we are starting a movement. And a movement comes when enough is enough. We can't wait so much. We can't see when our little girls are being abused. We have to do something. I don't believe in NGOs. I told him that. I don't believe in charity because they believe in writing proposals. <laughs> but George, this is going to be a movement. So we could come together, play football, talk to each other in a movement called Shofko, Shining Off for Committees. I was looking for hope. And because of my mom, who taught me how to wash dishes, when I used to fight with my sister, Say, Kennedy, in this house, you are all the same. You are complaining, take dishes, or shall And other men could laugh at me. That was the moment I was baptized into feminism of women issues. <laughs> it was hard. So I thought of myself one day, if, if I have a dream, I want to build a school for women. I also love boys, don't take me wrong. A school for women 
from an early age so that community can also see the power of the women. Women like my mom can also have a dream. So something happened. One day, I used to go to town walking because I couldn't afford fare and check my email. And I don't have the password. And you know it was Yahoo. So I have to look for that one person. <laughs> and I can't type. If I don't see him that day, no checking emails. <laughs> so I go to the cyber, and I, he was a tall Kikuyu guy. I talked to him, say, check for me. And I got an email from a, a white lady from America. Her name was Jessica. Kennedy, my name is Jessica. I'm coming to Kenya, study abroad programs. I want to work with you on your theater. And I'm like, because I was also kind of, you know, raster man, you know, pride. <laughs> I say, hey, a bully would be So, I told Jessica that uh, <laughs> this is not NGO, this is a movement. Send me your CV. I, I, I didn't know she was beautiful, I swear. And I said, send your CV, and we, and we don't want any wazungus. You have to have knowledge. So, Jessica, big Jessica, wrote back. That's another after one month. You know? You look for the same guy, you got an email, you have your five shillings, and you print it here at To make the story short, Jessica sent a very, very long CV. I really didn't understand. <laughs> but I told her to come. By then I remember I was working in town, techno brain. I was washing toilets. Because my mom told me, hey, it's true. My mom told me that at a come, even if, speaking Swahili, even if you are peeling an orange, my son put every effort. So in that place, if you go now, they know Kennedy or Daddy. When I was not around, toilet was smelling. When I was there, I was really sweeping, and people loved me. Up to now, they don't know me. You know what I mean? So I knew when I do something, I put my focus, because that's my mom told me that. So I have to come earlier and go to meet Jessica, who is now back. I don't have money. And uh, I carry a brush in my hand, so when I reach there, I do like this. So I look like a, a CEO by then, but not, you know? So Jessica and I meet, and we become very close friends. And now, Jessica and I later on came and lived with us with my family in Kibera. And we fall in love, but not quickly. Pole pole. <laughs> pole pole. Anyway, to make the story short, <laughs> to make the story short, I was able, later on, Jessica, we used to do theater. So Joey, you and I will talk. It's called Ambush Theater in the community. Then, uh, because of the violence of 2007, I had to run away. And through God, I don't know how it happened, I was able to get a scholarship to fly to America to a university called Western in Connecticut. I never fly before. And I remember my life changed when I was in the plane. And the air hostel, no, 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 no. Ask me. I was sitting there with Jessica, enjoying it. Eh? Wow. This lady calls me, Sir, what do you want, red or white? I'm like, see your Mimi, I've never been Sir. Why, you know, Wahindi, bad Wahindi used to really treat me badly. I was called stupid, you know, when I was working in the factory or when I was doing, so I never believed I was Sir. You, Sir, like, me? Bring both. White, you know? To make the story short, see and delay. I go now to America. Jaluo from Kibera in America. The thing now that I love most is now the time people are preparing to go to classroom. Now you have to go take a shower. See, Jai, find No, no, I was not smelling. I used to do like this, okay? 
And you do it at night because you are unable to see you. So I go to this bathroom, my friends, I stay there for two hours. Maji atoka binguni, moto. Ay, 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 ay. They were like, is this African man okay? Hello, okay, are you okay? I'm Bomale, I'm okay. Stand up, for you are right. Eh? Eh? Ah. Uh, until today, I love shower. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's go back what's important. So now, I have been, now I'm blessed. I'm in this beautiful school. At lunchtime, I remember I was running to be number one at the cafeteria because we believe that it's Aisha. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, so what happened is that I realized that how much I'm blessed. The first summer, I went back and I start continue with Shofko that I start, we started. And right now, Shofko is having a really big impact in Kibera. The message is that Kennedy, a poor boy, was able with nothing, with just a soccer ball. What is your soccer ball? What is your football? You don't have to complain anymore. What do you do? We live in Nairobi, but you don't know where Kibera or Madare is. <laughs> so the message is that we can all have impact. We can all have impact. We cannot complain. And right now what I need from you is that how can you support our work? Simple things are having impact. Liking our Facebook. Simple like that. Our Twitter. Supporting the girls. And I'm in the room today. I have my students in the room some, and the headmistress. Head and right now, we are serving over 250,000. We are in Kibera, Madare, Mombasa. And a movement was formed. Because, as Joy said, we never believed in money. It was all about mission and giving back to the community. So to be in this stage today, I am so happy and honored. And thank you so much for having me here. <laughs>